We've got another exciting episode of Locked On Blue Devils up for you today. Another installment of the Duke men's basketball recruiting look back. These classes are so great for Duke men's hoops, and we've really enjoyed getting the chance to chat with our good pal, Jason Jordan, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated. We're talking the class of 2016 today, featuring a guy by the name of Jason Tatum. Ever heard of him? We'll talk about that here on Locked On Blue Devils. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. Hope that you're doing very well today on Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. Lockdown Blue Devils is your daily podcast devoted to everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. If you haven't done so already, be sure to follow our show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. I'm on Twitter as well at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Follow and subscribe to Locked On Blue Devils for free wherever you get your podcasts. Also watch the show daily each and every day on YouTube. Subscribe there as well as we continue to climb towards our next goal of 1,000 subscribers here on Locked On Blue Devils. On today's show, I'm so fired up to be talking about Duke men's basketball recruiting. Taking a look back at the great classes that were for Duke men's hoops. Today, we're going to be discussing the class of 2016 with our good pal Jason Jordan, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated. And as always, we'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football and college basketball recruiting sponsor across the Locked On Network. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Jason Jordan now joins us here on the program today. Jason, good to see you, my man. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Yeah, likewise, man. Mine was great. I hope yours was. Certainly was. A lot, and really enjoyed getting to eat a lot of great food and watch basketball. I, I know on the Duke side of things, they wish that game with Purdue Went a little bit differently over the weekend, but nonetheless, uh, good to see this team in full form. So today, I want to keep these recruiting look-back segments going. I've had a lot of fun talking about these guys with you and uh, kind of reminiscing on what you remember. So we're going to talk about the high school class of 2016. Six commits and signees for Duke that year featuring Jason Tatum, Harry Giles, Frank Jackson, Marquise Bolden, Javon Delorier, and Jack White. Six total players we know, we know Duke's in this one-and-done era. They've got these large recruiting classes each and every year. But uh, first glance, what did you think of that 2016 class? Oh, it was insane. I mean, uh, you know, you got Tate and HG um, teaming up. And, you know, that that was one that, you know, it, you know they, they had floated that around too, almost like a package deal. Um, Jason obviously was in the summer, and then we found out that it was actually a lot earlier than that. I'm sure we'll get to that later, but um, you know, I know he was going after. They were very, they were really close throughout high school, and so he was really recruiting Harry, and um, obviously that certainly helped. But I mean, the strength that that class was loaded. I mean, they had they had everything. They had stars, they had role players, they had guys that could do multiple things, and um, you know, obviously. At the time, Harry was the prize right. of that of that class because um, he it was before he had torn his ACL the second time, and uh, yeah, it it was a uh, that that was a monster class. I mean, you say that a lot about Duke, but that that was one of the more impressive classes I've seen in a while. Yeah, I want to talk. Let's stay with Harry Giles right there again, the, the number one player in the country that everyone is trying to commit. Yeah to their school and he ultimately ends up at Duke injuries. We knew that was a thing going into his college career at Duke. And that certainly was a big factor in the lone season that he played for the blue devils as well. But what do you just remember about Harry Giles on the high school circuit? It was insane. I mean, I I don't think, you know, I I hate to say it because, you know, it was, 
I don't think we ever saw the Harry that I saw that we thought it would be. I mean, he's gone on to have a really good career. He's obviously made a lot of money, still playing. Um, but we were talking like, you know, Harry was just so versatile, so dominant, had such a motor. Um, he's like 6'10", handling the ball like a guard. You know, even before that was really popular now. Uh, I know six years doesn't seem like a long time ago, but the game has, you know, grown leaps and bounds, especially at that that four position. Um, but, you know, he, the, I remember watching him. Uh, I watched him for like three years. But I remember specifically in the John Wall Holiday Invitational that December of his, I believe, junior year when he was at Wesleyan Christian. And um, he put on a sh- I mean, it it was like, that's, he's, yeah, he's no, he's the number one thing. <laughs> he's doing insane. Like, I mean, hand, like a point, like he had the ball on a string, like Kyrie type handles. And I mean, at 6'10", and, and I remember the crowd was, and he dropped like 28, and then he dropped like 30, and this is healthy Harry. And so then, you know, I remember he goes, and I think it was two minutes into his game, he transferred to Oak Hill for his senior year, i never forget it. And Steve was talking about how um, it was literally like minute two of the first game, the season opener, he tears ACL again. And I we just never saw – that I never saw that Harry that I saw that was so dominant in AAU and in high school uh, coming up. So obviously he didn't play his senior year, um, and so I, that really set him back. And I, he just never was that guy again. You know, um, you saw flashes, but he was never that guy. I mean, obviously at Duke, um, he was you know solid at best, but he you know he just wasn't himself. Right. After the injury, um, and that's unfortunate, obviously, because he was special, special, special. Yeah, I, I want to keep talking about that. Last week, you know, we're talking about the 2018 prize commit for Duke then is Brandon Ingram coming out of Kinston, North Carolina. Here you are with Harry Giles, another state of North Carolina product. All yeah. these ACC schools in the state are trying to get after him. Uh, yeah. Recruiting aside – just how big of a star, because again, to remind folks, Jason, you're based out of the hoop state as well. You're based out of North Carolina as well. Going yeah. back in that time frame, 2014, 2015, leading up to his senior year in the class of 2016, how big of a star was Harry Giles? Oh man, the biggest, the biggest, um, you know, he's, uh, he's a kind of, you know, after games, fans, hunt, line of 50 to hundred fans after every game. But then Harry's the kind of guy that's going to sign 110. Like he's going <laughs> to seek out 10 more people that may want to not. That he's just, I mean, great guy, amazing kid, um, great speed. Even to this day, he's the exact same way. I've seen him the um, exact same way. And, um, yeah, he, he was a rock star. He was he was definitely was a rock star, guy who commanded a lot of attention when he walks in the gym. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the, you know, there are some number one players who don't command attention, but he has such a, a bubbly personality. You kind of flock to him. And so, um, yeah, a hundred percent rock star status. hundred percent. For, for Harry, he played for team CP three on the circuit yeah. there, obviously a Winston Salem native himself. Did yeah. it feel like it was going to be Duke all along when you go back to his recruiting? Yeah. I mean, you know, he, they had the Jason Tatum thing, thing going for him you know what I'm saying and um they were very close I remember in the Peach Jam they played in the final four it was like that was an epic game too a lot of people remember that they played against each other I think JT won that and um uh yeah I, that was the the back channel conversations were like it was you know strong for Duke and then Kentucky was obviously in the mix um but yeah definitely um Kentucky and Kansas to some degree and then you know, Wake Forest was in there just because, you know, he's I think he's originally from Winston-Salem. So um, I don't think they really had a chance. But um, I think Kentucky was probably the second tier. But I think everybody thought he was going to do. All right. Let's continue talking about this class of 2016 and talk about that guy by the name of Jason Tatum. And we're going to do that after our first time out here on today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils today is brought to you by our friends over at Omaha Steaks. Fall is in the air, and that means fall grilling with cookouts 
tailgate parties, and so much more. Luckily, the flavor experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to savor all the flavors of fall with their mouth-watering assortments of perfectly aged steaks, ultra-juicy burgers, and easy-to-prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Now is the perfect time to load up on all this incredible flavor and take advantage of 50% off statewide by shopping their friends and family sale. Go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, at checkout to get $30 off of your order. I certainly do love Omaha Steaks myself, so join in on the fun. Don't wait. Go to omahasteaks.com and stock up today. Omaha Steaks isn't just steak. It's the best steak of your life, guaranteed. Don't forget to score the extra $30 off your order when you use the code LOCKEDON at checkout. Visit omahasteaks.com, promo code locked on at checkout. Minimum order may be required. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, I'm JJ Jackson alongside my buddy Jason Jordan, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated. Jason Tatum, another really dynamic player that Duke had in the class of 2016 out of St. Louis. Let's talk all things Jason Tatum here. Yeah, I remember um, even to this day, I would say the ease in which Jason Tatum scored the ball um, always stood out to me. You know, it, it was like, you know, old school in your backyard playing 21 with your friends. I don't even know do people still play 21. I hope they um, do. <laughs> right. But um Jay, I mean, he just scored in every way imaginable. And it was so effortless. And he would make like tough. Uh, highly contested uh, shots, and he just was a shot maker all over the court. He got to the rim when he wanted to. He was always going to give you a highlight, usually every quarter. And um, you know, just at his size, a six eight, um, and his ability to to get past small, quick guards. I mean, just with his length. So he would make different adjustments based off who was guarding him, because a lot of times they try and put some, you know, like six three quick guard on him and you know, when he's on the perimeter, but his length would just bother everybody. Then he was so versatile. So guys, his size and up couldn't even, they, it was just a wrap, you know, there's nothing they could do. And um, just his ability to make shots was what made him so dangerous. And, you know, I think that's somewhat continued now. I don't know how well he's doing now, but I think, I think, I think that may have carried over. I think I may have heard that. It's unbelievable to see what he's been able to do in the NBA so far, year after year after year, continuing to develop. This past year, he was first team all NBA, the first Duke Blue Devil to receive that recognition since Grant Hill ages ago. So, I mean, really, really good stuff uh, for Tatum. Talk to me about his recruiting process, though, Jason. I got to yeah. hear all the stories. How did yeah, he know Harry, do? Harry was a blogger of mine, and Jason Tatum was a blogger of mine. So, I got the best two <laughs> that year. So, um, talked to them a lot. Um, Jason, I remember, you know, I, I'm sure people know by now that when he was on All the Smoke, he said, uh, even though he committed in July, the year prior to his graduation, so I think it was July 2015 is when he announced that he was going to do. But um, he said he had actually committed in April. I don't know if people saw that, but he said he, he silently committed to them in April. Well, the funny thing is, um, let's just say there were... <laughs> I won't say who, but that, but there was some, there was some that was alluded to to me by somebody, right? <laughs> uh, um, uh, shout out to that person, but um, yeah. So I remember when Duke won the title, Jason, um, he talked about how um, I remember he did a blog around that time with us. And he was talking about how I think it was like three days, maybe maybe a week after Duke won the title, K and Capel were in his den. I mean, you know, like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like this, they're rock stars on this this highest stage. They got the marketing uh, that you know every coach dreams of, and um, now they're in my den. <laughs> and um, you know, I think that really blew him away. That I got that. I almost want to go back and read that blog now. And so. Um, I, but I distinctly remember that. And um, I can always tell in a tonally when a, a kid is really like 
uh, in awe of a program, you know, or if there's, you know, rumors that the kid is potentially leaning that way. I can always tell, you know, I, I don't say, but I can tell. Um, and he definitely had a bad, bad poker face when it came to Duke. So it wasn't shocking that he ended up going there. I don't think it was shocking to anybody um, that he ended up there. Not at all. So he starts to play for Duke, and obviously in his uh, one year for the Duke Blue Devils, Jason Tatum, a really good basketball player, goes on to be a top three pick in the NBA draft, helps yeah. Duke win the uh, ACC tournament there in 2017. If Duke fans right now picture any clip of Jason Tatum in a Duke uniform, I would bet it's going to be the game in Cameron against North Carolina where Kennedy Meeks yeah. got a little too close to the rim. And Tatum caught a body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kennedy knew better than that. You gotta stop. You gotta <laughs> relax. You gotta relax, Kennedy. Um, but yeah, yeah, you gotta get out the way when Jake's coming down. <laughs> or you're gonna be you're gonna be referenced years later, like we right. are now. So um, yeah, that definitely would be the one that stuck out to me because they they show it all the time. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was that was a highlight for the ages. Uh, another player I want to talk about in this class of 2016 for yeah. Duke, Jason, w- would be Frank Jackson. Oh yeah, and a, a player that I'm certainly partial to because he's got an amazing last name. If I say so myself, <laughs> big fan of that. Seeing on the back of a Duke uniform of Jackson uh, right there, but out of Utah, unbelievable athlete, really oh, good man. shooter. I mean. Only played one year at Duke and then was like the first or second pick of the second round of the draft that year and has put together a pretty good NBA career for himself as well. But, uh, I mean, man, Frank Jackson turned out to be a really good player for Duke. He did, um, and he really blossomed. I mean, everybody, you know, he was obviously who he was in high school. But I don't – but the buzz was not around one and done for Frank. Right. That that wasn't – that wasn't what they were thinking. They were thinking too, uh, you know – potentially three yeah, you know not that that's not a, that's sad that that's a knock these days but <laughs> you know like it's certainly not one and done that right. was not with anybody's time i can tell you that for sure but i mean that's a credit to him he went in there he did what he had to do one thing i remember about him is he was at at one point committed to byu um decommitted there and but he was always saying he was going to do a mission because he's a mormon right um and so that's why i was always like oh, i don't think he Duke isn't really that, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's why it was. But then, in the end, in like the last uh, couple, like the la- it became pretty clear in the last couple months, last month or so, that he was going to end up because it was right after the summer when he committed. I think it was like right around uh, Labor Day or something like that. Right. I know it was right after Peach Jam. Somewhat, well, not so, not maybe a month after Peach Jam. Then he he actually committed, but. Um, yeah, he was, he was, Frank is a bad man. Now, you know, I think, um, I think people, the question with him was, could he play the point? Was he a two? Was he too small to play the two? It, you know, if he went there and, you know, but he obviously went there and um, he had a, yeah, Frank, Frank was a bad man freshman year. I, but he, he averaged like, and on that team, why did he average like 15, 14? Yeah, and, you know, because Luke Kennard is back for a sophomore year yeah. for Duke that year, and then yeah. factoring him in, and Grayson yeah. Allen is still in the mix as well. So, yeah. I mean, a, a really good Duke basketball. Yeah. I was just throughout the year watching Frank play. Yeah. The jump shot was so smooth. But then, you know, I mean, his leaping ability, Jason, I mean, that yeah. guy would get up yeah. and, uh, and absolutely throw it down yeah. for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then that obviously hasn't changed, but that, that was, the, that was the ultimate, uh, that was probably his strongest suit. Like just his athleticism, his, his um, ability to change speeds, I think was really something that always kept the other guards at bay. Um, and then he just had that mentality. He was a dog. Right. Um, and he really got after it on both ends of the floor. So he did a lot of things really well, but his athleticism combined with his change of speed and, his shiftiness was definitely the thing that stood out. You got a few more in the class of 2016 for Duke. You've got uh, Jack White and Javin Delorier, yeah. who turned out to be four-year players for Duke, had yeah. really solid careers. Uh, yeah. Jack White had some stretches where he was shooting the snot out of the basketball yeah. and then other stretches where he couldn't hit anything. Uh, yeah. I, I got to be a little critical of Javin from time to time throughout his Duke mm-hmm. career, uh, but uh, ultimately those guys ended up just being quality Duke basketball players for yeah. full four years. 
Yeah, that's the and that's the thing with fans, uh, and I think um, fans kind of get it misconstrued, especially when you know you're a little spoiled at places like Duke and stuff. No like that. You gotta have yeah. you gotta have role players too, and those that's what they were recruited to be. Um, and they, you know, I feel like they filled those roles really well. I would agree. I would certainly agree. And then the last guy in this class that I wanted to talk about uh, was Marquise Bolden out of DeSoto, Texas. Uh, Matt Jones was already on the Duke roster, also from DeSoto High in DeSoto, Texas. Mm -hmm. I remember Bolden being a really late addition to Duke men's basketball in the recruiting world there. Ultimately plays three seasons, leaves after his junior year at Duke, and he keeps getting NBA call-ups from time to time. I mean, a really talented yeah. big man. Let's talk about Marquise here. I got a great Marquise story. Um, okay, actually broke, I'm ready. I broke his commitment, um, and I know this because I was on the phone with him. I would love to revisit this with him at some point. <laughs> but I was on the phone with him because he was going to let me break it. Right? right. So I was like, okay, yeah, let me know. I probably talked to him for an hour, like 12.30 a.m., the night before or the morning before he was committing the next day and he didn't know, you know, that's rare. Like, you know, it's usually like, you know, the kid usually knows he just doesn't say, or he does, he, you know, tries to pretend to build the suspense, whatever. This kid did not know it was Duke or Kentucky, you know? And so he was real. I mean, he was on the phone with me, like, I don't know, but like, you know, I could go here and it, right. I'm like, ah, Wait, I'm just the reporter. I was like, he's like, what do you think? I mean, he was doing what like, do you think? What I mean, you think that's a good look? I'm like, hey man, I, hey man, I not know. really my job. I think you could close your eyes and pick if you really want me to tell you the truth. You know, like, this is a tr- factual story. I mean, a hundred wow, strong 30 minutes to an hour on the phone with this guy, back and forth, back and forth. I'm talking to um, oh, how can I say that? I'm. T- <laughs> I'm talking to uh, people that want to know. Right. Also, <laughs> so we're up late. A bunch of us are up late because I think I think Duke had got word, but I felt I think they caught the shakiness of the word, and so they were like, "Yo, I know you you doing is it. Is this so firm or not? not? Yeah, what's know, going like, on? <laughs> yeah." So it was uh, he was uh, conflicted. You know, I mean, it's Duke and Kentucky. I mean, that might sound bad to a Duke fan now, but. It's Duke in Kentucky. Like, if it's me, I'm conflicted. You know, right. I don't know. I don't know. I got, I got But at the end of the day, he just he just felt more led to be a Duke. Um, and, um, yeah. But I distinctly I, – I mean, I That's told awesome. that story with this year. I've told that story. that Because that one always stands out to me. Because just how – he just wanted reassurances. Like, you know, like, you think this is the right thing to do? I was like, wow, what? Hey man, you know, shout out to Marquis Bolden, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and look, if if uh, you know people watching us on YouTube here, we certainly do appreciate your support of Locked On Blue Devils. Yeah. You want to talk about some highlights uh, from the high school days? For I mean, just absolutely dominant. Like Marquis Bolden, one of those guys in high school. It's like you were clearly so much bigger and more dominant yeah. than everyone else yeah. around you. Uh, and we certainly saw that throughout his Duke career too. Yeah, just a big body man, big body. Um, Definitely felt like he always had had it, you know, to make it in the NBA and make money as a professional basketball player. Um, so, you know, to see how he's kind of um, panned out, it's probably about what I thought um, just based off his size and skill set. So he's done well for himself, and um, that's definitely a credit to him. Jason, it's always so much fun to look back over the days and years of Duke basketball recruiting and certainly appreciate your perspective and insight. Thanks again for stopping by the podcast today, my friend. Absolutely, man. I always love coming by. That's my good pal, Jason Jordan, and he's joining us here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. We'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.